I'm Brad. I'm Mike, and behind the scenes we have Bob, and together we are the most famous physical therapy team on the internet. That's right, and our opinion, of course, I'm sorry. And if you're new to the channel and like this video, make sure to subscribe. But today we are talking about frozen shoulder. Now, Brad, what's the other name for frozen shoulder? Adhesive capsulitis. And typically with this type of problem you are having, it takes quite a while to actually heal up. It involves your shoulder joint itself, and typically it may... Be a little painful or hard to move early on, but it gets worse and worse with time. As a matter of fact, it may take a few months for it to slowly freeze or get stiff, and then at a certain point, it will uh, level off, and it may stay at that point for months, and then they call it an unthawing stage as it gradually improves so you can get back to normal range of motion. Rather interesting. Now, according to the Mayo Clinic, this is a three-stage process. The first stage is called the freezing stage, and this can last anywhere from two to nine months. That's right. And then we have the frozen stage, which is stage number two. This can last four to 12 months. And last is the thawing stage, which can last five months to two years. Now, this whole process really varies between each individual, and it can take one to three years to get better. Right. So it's really not understood what causes it, what makes it get better, or can it get better faster? That's the myth. And that's what we're going to talk about. Some exercises as therapists, we will let you know in just a bit. But let's talk a little bit more about uh, some details of the disease. So it can take time to recover from this, like we mentioned, obviously, with the time span there. And some things that can affect this individually are severity of the condition. Some people get really mild frozen shoulder and some people it's much more severe what's the next thing brad age and overall health how, how healthy are you how active you may be may make a difference as well Another thing that can play a factor is how well you adhere to your treatment plan. Uh, <laughs> we're going to go through a little bit later what we suggest doing if you have this issue. Right. Other, other underlying conditions, whether you're diabetic, previous uh, broken arm, or perhaps a surgery. Anything like a stroke. Mm. You know, if you have a side you can't move as much, it could become frozen and painful. Or, yes, like we mentioned, if you have surgery, a lot of times if you've had shoulder surgery, you can't move it for six weeks to two months. So sometimes it can occur then. Now, some common treatment recommendations are range of motion exercises. So what that means is moving your shoulder within the range you can comfortably do. And we're going to show some options later with that. What are some other things they can try, Brad? Do all the injections, the corticosteroids, numbing uh, injections to help uh, break up the, uh, the scar tissue and the adhesions there to get more range of motion. And... Off, not very often, but sometimes surgery. Yes, they'll do it to try to loosen up the joint capsule in there, but it's not very common because most of the time frozen shoulder eventually fixes itself. So I think we could say the myth is busted. Can a frozen shoulder heal? Yes. Does it heal fast? No. <laughs> So as therapists, we will work with people to help the thawing phase to speed up. Uh, we don't know for sure if we're making it go faster, but we know that we can track it. And it's one of those things that if you have a frozen shoulder, you want to do anything possibly to get it better faster. And these are the options. So we are going to show you Two easy, simple treatment programs to break up that adhesion, get your shoulder as maximum range of motion as possible. You can do these easily at home, either with a stick or a pulley system. Uh, either one, you could, the pulley system you can get very cheaply. Stick, you can use a broomstick, piece of doweling, whatever it may be. Uh, should we, whoa, be careful. Whoa, man. I didn't adjust should we this uh, one start well. with the stick? You can start with a stick, I guess. I'll yeah. fix this up. All right. So you take a stick. It should be about an inch to inch and a half in diameter. Uh, we're using the Booyah stick. They work really well because your hand does not slide on them. But whatever. Uh, do that. Get your arm up. If your shoulder is tight at this point, you may go up a little bit with the good hand. Hold tight. And then we simply bow to the stick. There you go. And right there, it's pulling, pulling, pulling. You get a lot of leverage because you got your body weight and you simply 
Bring your hips down and bow. You get a really nice stretch there. You may stretch and hold it 15 to 30 seconds, or you may do pressure on, pressure off. You can put the other hand up here to assist, and uh, it works quite well, actually. And you simply put a mark on the stick, and then you can tell how far you've gone after a couple of weeks. I may have started down here, and maybe a week or two or three or four later, you're up to here. Now, pulleys has probably been around the longest that we've used. It's an excellent option. Mike, talk about that. So what you're going to do is use your good arm pulling down to help your frozen shoulders. So we'll say my left side is frozen. Just go to what you comfortably can. If you're stuck here and it's painful, just go to there, hold it for a little bit, then go back down. You can do this for repetitions or time. Times, just try to hold it at that top stretching point. And over time, during the thawing phase, it should get better and you can get it higher and higher up. You can also try going out to the side to get a different motion. Oftentimes people may be a little more limited going out to the side versus in front of them. So just take it slow and easy. Pulleys are relatively inexpensive. You don't even have to have the big metal aspect we have in ours. Some of them, they can just wedge right into a door and they can be relatively cheap. Yeah, actually, we have one, I think actually two videos, um, Bob and Brad, on how to make your own pulley system. Just, you know, Google Bob and Brad, how to make your own pulley system, and uh, there you go. The other thing I would want to mention about the stick that I do like is you can also go out to the side just like you can with the pulley, so that, that option's available. This is my good hand frozen shoulder, we can work that direction. And this is one of my favorite moves, is going extension. Although the, that usually is not too limited, this is gonna help get it that way. So you can actually get three planes, flexion, abduction, and extension with the stick. And the stick, you probably won't have to even buy one. If you've watched this whole video, let us know by commenting down below and tell us if you've had a frozen shoulder because a lot of people have and they're not very fun and let us know what worked. And if you want to check out more videos on frozen oh. shoulder stretches and exercises specifically, click the video link on the screen. There you go. Fro frozen <laughs> shoulder stretches. Frodo. <laughs> and exercises. Very good. Uh, if you got a frozen shoulder, good luck with it and uh, work with it well. Bob and Brad, the two most famous. Physical therapist on the internet.